I was interested in science um, because I was always interested in how things worked. So I used to take apart all of the toys that I would get and hopefully put them back together, right? But, um, and so if they would break, I'd fix them. You know, I'd take them apart, find out what was wrong, and fix them. And I actually start, started uh, charging the neighborhood kids. So I'd like charge them a quarter if I could fix their toys for them. And it was great because I got to take apart lots and lots of different things. Um, but I was, I was also always kind of, um, kind of causing trouble when I was younger. School didn't have much to keep me interested. I, I mean, most of the stuff was pretty easy, and I was um, always in. The, well, there were many reasons, but I was always in the principal's office for being uh, a little bit too rambunctious or getting in fights or something like that. And so, in fact, I, every principal that I ever had, I knew on a first-name basis, and it wasn't because I was such a great kid. Uh, I was going to say, at least once a year, they'd have me in their office, and I'd have to send a, take home a letter to my parents and sign it. Or, or back in those days, we used to get paddled, so we don't do that anymore. But um, just sort of when I got to high school, things turned around. I, I was al also always interested in running and and playing football and. When I got to high school, I went I went to St. Louis High School, and and it was a it was kind of a good move because the brothers there were very strict, and well, that was back in the days when it was mostly run by the Marianist brothers, and so they kind of set me on the, the right path, and I stopped being invited to the principal's office, and I uh, started running a lot more and playing football, and uh, it turns out that all of that channeling all that aggression into those those into sports really helped because then I didn't feel the need to go and fight with people and things like that. And then of course I was so naturally interested in science that I just applied around to a bunch of different places that had good science programs and one place in particular had a really good math physics program and also had a good football team so I went there. One of the things that people uh, conveniently forget is that Hawaiians and I, I assume Polynesians in general were fantastic natural scientists. Um, you, can't, you can't float in a canoe from the South Pacific to Hawaii and find Hawaii unless you know what you're doing. And that knowing what you're doing is, you know, hundreds of years of experiment, trial and error and finding out how to do this. So. I think my natural inquisitive abilities, the fact that I, you know, I'm not afraid to do stuff, those things all which come from my, my Hawaiian background, really helped a lot. There's one thing that's kind of hindered it a bit, and that's that when I was young, of course, I was taught, um, you know, you uh, keep your ears open, keep your eyes open, but keep your mouth shut. And that goes kind of contrary to what you normally see in in Western education. Western education, everybody asks you, got any questions? Well, if you go by the, the standard that I was taught, you don't ask the questions. You wait until later or something. And I found myself doing that all the way through graduate school. Even at conferences these days, I tend to not ask questions until, I'm, until it's all pow. And so you have to get a little out of that that um, being closed. Astronomy in the old days used to be mostly um, a science of observation where you, you notice something going on and you, and you, uh, you know, make notes about it, right? Oh, this sun did this or this star did this. Or you keep a long list of all the different stars or the different galaxies in, in the world. But physics is trying to look at natural phenomena and write a mathematical equation that tells you um, how that phenomenon works. So like you can write an equation that tells you which way a ball will bounce. Okay. So if you think about it, you have astronomy, all these great things going up in the sky, and you got physics, and that's trying to write, do math with natural things that you see, and so you put them together. And so what we do is we try to make uh, mathematical uh, predictions, models, try to understand what's going on in the universe from the math side. 
So it's a little bit more complicated, but if you're interested in math, it's, it's, it's a great thing to do, because you're, it's, it goes with the way I was, the things I used to do when I was little. How do things work, you know? I, I can't really take apart stars and stuff, but I can use math to do the same kind of thing. It is absolutely essential that if you're going to uh, become a scientist, astronomer, physicist, biologist, volcanologist, oceanographer, that you take as much math as you possibly can. You know, math is the is kind of the language of science. So, the more you're able to express yourself in that language, the better you'll you'll do. Um, so that's one thing. And and starting right now, I mean, start at high school level, uh, intermediate. You know, start taking math. Start getting to be, you know, have it be a friend rather than a foe. Yeah. So and for girls especially, do not believe the lies that have been foisted upon you that you are not good in math. You're just as good, if not better, than the boys at math. And you have to get that out of your mind because uh, here at the Institute, for example, we have several top-notch uh, women astrophysicists who are just as good at math as I am. So that's a very important thing and, and don't fall into that trap. Uh, the other thing that I can, s the other really important thing to have is to be stubborn. If you've decided this is what you want to do, then don't let anybody tell you you can't. This year is, has been a fantastic year for the future of astronomy in, in, in Hawaii and the Pacific because um, it's, it's also coincidentally the International Year of Astronomy. So it, it, there's a lot of astronomy going on. But for us here at the Institute, it's been a banner year for many, many reasons. We've gotten funding on some projects to help um, teach children here in Hawaii. Um, we've gotten final funding on new telescopes. We're going to build the, if, if everything works out, we're going to build the, the biggest, most powerful uh, solar telescope in the world on Haleakala. And it's, um, it will uh, possibly bring with it many, many really interesting high-tech jobs. Um, along with, it may actually, uh, the Solar Observatory headquarters may actually move to Haleakala. And that will, also, of course, also bring a lot of opportunities for our, our people. Um, we also have just recently been uh, picked as the place where they're going to build this 30-meter uh, optical telescope on uh, on Mauna Kea, and it, of course, is going to be the the best, greatest optical telescope in the world too. So, in just this sort of summer, we've got these fantastic future things. These things are going to be built in, you know, over the next ten years or so, or perhaps twenty. But so now is the time for kids who are are young enough if they're interested in science in and it doesn't have to be just astronomy because there are many jobs that go along with these projects that have to do with computer science or engineering of all kinds you know engineering of all kinds of uh, different flavors so there's lots of possibilities and of course anytime you have a high tech um, field like astronomy or astrophysics coming up then many other high tech fields come along with it and so it, all of these things are are great for our kids because it, it gives them a chance to actually stay here. Um, one of the things that I did as a young man when I went off to college was I was I pretty much made a conscious decision that I was saying goodbye to Hawaii forever because there wasn't any of the kind of physics that I wanted to do other than maybe one or two faculty jobs but but not a not a real you know, possibility to, to come back. And it was just through sheer luck that um, they started this astro you know, astronomy uh, endeavor, and that that made it possible for me to come back. So I, I have real empathy for kids who are interested in science, and they got to look and make a decision at age 18 to leave Hawaii forever. You know, that just there's something wrong with that. So I think the you know the more we can in, in, increase the number of possible possibilities for those those kids and 
more chance they have of not having to go. I mean, they may want to go live on the mainland or in Europe. Or, I've been to both. This is still a better place. So.